So today, we're going to be doing uh, a couple of things. Uh, I may not do them all in one video. <laughs> so one of the things that we're going to do today is uh, I've done a few videos on these uh, A-Torch units um, for uh, doing uh, capacity testing uh, and, and how to use them and how to configure them. And uh, I thought it might be worthwhile to do a little bit of a quick video here that shows how to use some features other than the constant current uh, mode. So, you know, probably already familiar with using this device for uh, constant current for testing devices. So for testing batteries or, or other things, the constant current mode is often the one that we want to use, but this has other modes as well. So, um, so I'm going to kind of zoom in on the control screen here because that's really where a lot of the action takes place. So I'm going to zoom in on the control screen and we're, we're going to look at some of the other um, features that it has available in terms of testing devices or putting a load on devices is maybe the way to, to say that. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to, as a, we're, we're not going to be running at a very heavy load right now, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using one of these little this is sort of a, you know, what is it, 5 volt adapter from Apple. Uh, I've got probably 10 of these sitting around the house from uh, various iPhones, uh, various generations of iPhones. One of these used to come in every box. And so we're going to see how uh, we can uh, we'll be using this initially as the, the power source uh, for testing a variety of the features. So let's get zoomed in. You can see that the, the default, <clears throat> when the device is powered up, uh, constant current mode, but we can change the modes here. And to change the modes, we pr press and hold the setup button. So constant current, um, and if we, whoops, too slow. If we hold the setup button down and press the plus or minus, we go to constant resistance, constant power, constant voltage, and then back to constant current. So we've seen a lot of how to do this on constant current. So let's start going through these one at a time. So let's look at constant resistance. So we're gonna put a constant resistance load on the, the, the power brick. Now, the power brick I have is that little Apple uh, brick. And, um, and uh, it's, uh, I've connected it in through the micro USB port over here. And so, uh, right now it's off and I haven't initiated uh, anything so I turn it on and so as soon as I turn it on you can see the voltage here has now come up to uh, kind of what we would expect it to roughly speaking uh, 5 point you know 09 5.1 volts since we haven't started anything going yet uh, there's nothing else happening now um, one uh, a tenth of an ohm of resistance is really not a lot of resistance. Um, so we're not gonna use that uh, setting. We're gonna go over here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do uh, in order to kind of not go uh, sort of super crazy here, cause it's a small power supply, I'm gonna kind of put this in at, whoops, at 100 ohms. We've set the resistance for constant resistance mode at 100 ohms. We've got about 5 volts, 5.1 volts coming in. And uh, using Ohm's law, the, uh, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And so 5 volts divided by 100 ohms ends up giving us uh, 0 0.05 uh, amps, or what uh, translates into 50 milliamps. So we'll turn this on, and it starts operating, and after a couple of seconds, it kind of kicks in, and we can see that the current here now is sort of oscillating around 50 milliamps. And uh, the reason it's doing that is because the microcontroller in the system here is constantly adjusting uh, the circuitry or, or the settings in order to try to maintain a resistance at 100 ohms, which is the target we've specified. But of course, 
because uh, this is all sort of, um, you know, uh, hooked up to some other circuits in the power supply, as the resistance or the load on the power supply changes, it's going to in turn have an impact on the voltage, which is going to uh, um, have an impact on the resistance, which is going to have an impact on the current. And, and so the, the microcontroller is constantly sort of adjusting the, the internal settings um, in order to make sure or in order to hold the resistance as close to 100 ohms as possible. And so when you see here, it goes a little bit above, a little below, a little above, a little below. And so it's sort of just oscillating as it uh, tries to maintain that resistance. So that's the way that the, uh, the constant resistance mode works. And I'm just gonna, um, you know, now, uh, because we're using a power brick, uh, a small one, but nonetheless, a power brick, well, you can, you know, the, the power uh, readout makes a lot of sense, 0.25, uh, you know, 2,500 milliwatts. Um, that all makes sense. Uh, sorry, 250 milliwatts. But uh, the, uh, the total energy and capacity, these readouts and the runtime, they're not really relevant to this kind of a scenario because, of course, there's a, a, a theoretically unlimited amount of uh, energy that I can get because this is connected to uh, to mains power. So some of these other uh, values don't really have an impact upon the behavior. So we're just looking here, as I mentioned, at how the constant resistance mode worked. So let's stop that. Okay, so that was constant resistance. Now let's look at uh, a different setting. Okay, constant resistance. No. Okay, let's look at constant power. Okay, so in constant power, we're going to be specifying how many watts we want to get out of um, the unit. And constant power is going to be one kind of mode that's useful for testing the, uh, the capabilities of the, the power supply in addition to, to constant current. Um, these particular power uh, modules, power bricks, are spec'd for 5 volts and 1 amp. So they should be able to put out uh, 5 volts times 1 amp. If you remember, uh, once again, um, the, uh, the various uh, circuit analysis laws, power is equal to the current times the voltage. So um, since we're uh, running at 5 volts, if we want to get uh, 5 watts of power out of here, we'll need um, uh, one amp of current. So let's uh, let's put five watts in as the target amount of power, and of course that's more or less the spec uh, maximum for this little uh, power brick. So we specified that we want to get five watts out, constant power. We're getting about five volts, so the the current is going to be a little lower than uh, than one amp, but uh, but pretty close. Turn that on. Now, what you can see, of course, which uh, which I forgot is once a load goes on the system, the voltage actually drops a little bit. So the actual voltage output by the power brick is uh, you can see here it's it's reasonably steady around 4.8 volts. Okay, that means the current in order to give us the desired target of five watts, it has to be a little higher than one amp. So we've got you know uh, one point. 025, you know, so one amp and, and, and a little bit in the milliamps. And the power, just like we saw with resistance, uh, the power is, is varying a little bit as the microcontroller tries to keep the power on target at five watts. And uh, once again, um, also see, we see here, uh, in this case, the resistance, uh, the re resistance that the, uh, that the, uh, voltage regulator or controller is putting out here is around 4.7 ohms. So a resistance of around 4.7 ohms gives us the um, current of about one amp um, for the, the five watts of, uh, of total power. So that's how uh, that comes together. Let's stop that. Now let's look at the last one setup here. Constant voltage is probably the weirdest kind of mode 
to try to use on this device. And so uh, you really have to give some thought to exactly what, uh, what you're trying to achieve with constant voltage because the device will try to operate in a certain fashion to do that. But the, um, unlike some of the other items where, you know, it's reasonable to imagine controlling the output current um, or the amount of current that a device would draw or the resistance or the power, varying the voltage on the output um, is, is, a, is, a, is a much trickier thing to do uh, because usually the voltage is fairly fixed based on the output of the power brick. So what I've done here is uh, I've set the initial starting voltage that we want to work with and maintain at five volts, which is the rated um, value for this particular power brick. And I've set the cutoff voltage here down to zero because uh, I don't want it to sort of stop calculating uh, when it hits certain kinds of odd voltage conditions. So uh, right now it's off, so I haven't started pulling any, uh, any current. So I'm going to turn it on, and we'll see what happens. So I turn it on, and what we can see is that um, while uh, the, the, the microcontroller, it's trying to maintain as close as possible to this 5.0 target voltage that I've set. And so to do that, it's putting out a certain kind of resistance, uh, or you could think of it as a certain... Uh, current draw. I, I prefer to think of it as a current draw. And so it's um, putting out a current draw of about 420 um, milliamps. Uh, that generates a certain power, a uh, certain load. So that tells us that uh, when we're operating under these parameters, the, the power brick will output, um, you know, will operate in this fashion. Now, if we try to bump the voltage up to 5.1 volts, it, it all kind of stops, right? Because there isn't really a solution because the power brick just isn't able to put out more than what you see here, the 5.09 volts. And so it kind of gives up. Uh, it can't come up with a solution. So it doesn't put out, um, you know, like in, in the hopes of driving the voltage up, it was trying to zero or drive down the current. But of course, the, the voltage hasn't really... Uh, uh, no, no, it can't drop the current far enough. Uh, we can't really go negative. And so it, it can't drop the current load far enough to get more than the 5.09 volts. Okay, so that kind of tells us uh, that we're beyond the voltage limit. Now, we can go the other way a little bit because when we're putting a full load uh, on the device, the voltage does drop. So let's go back. There's the 5.0 volts. And after a second or two, it begins to kind of click in. We'll drop to 4.9 volts, and of course, it can come up with a, a, a solution for 4.9 volts um, uh, when it's fully loaded. Uh, we saw before the voltage dropped to around somewhere in the 4.8 range, so we'll do that again. We'll drop the voltage to 4.8 volts, but now you can see that it really, once again, it's having trouble finding uh, a setting that will result in a constant sort of 4.8 volt um, uh, draw or 4.8 volt output uh, here. And, and so as a result, it kind of, every once in a while, as it kind of cycles through parameters, it tries to come up with some sort of a load that would produce 4.8 volts, but it's never able to really kind of get there in any, uh, let's say, in any convincing manner. And so it kind of resets itself to, to try all over again. Um, and of course, if we keep going uh, lower, I mean, we can't really do anything. The device kind of gets a little bit confused. Um, there isn't really, it, it can't really generate a solution for these parameters um, that will correspond to what it can get out of, uh, out of that particular power brick. And we kind of get a little bit of an error uh, message that flashes up here in the, in the corner every once in a while. So, the, the constant voltage setting, um, you know, sort of limited use, it will work uh, when the voltage is around the, uh, the nominal voltage that the, uh, the device can put out, and it will work 
when it's within the level of voltage drop that happens when the, there's kind of like a, a typical load on the unit. But if you drop the voltage too far beyond uh, typical kind of um, operating parameters for what this brick is capable of, it just um, just kind of gives up and says, hey, sorry, I can't really uh, produce a steady voltage at that level. Um, not happening. That was a run through of what we can do with the different types of um, settings here in terms of constant current, uh, which is in the main video, uh, constant resistance, constant power, and constant voltage. So now we've gone through how all of those operate. Uh, the other settings here, time discharge, cutoff voltage, uh, those are reviewed in the, the first part of the series on how to use the device. Thanks for watching. If you uh, found this video to be useful, please give it a thumbs up and please, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.